heard of Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom, right? But did you know there's a third Adobe product out there that can help you on your journey to saving your digital photos? Let me show you how this little known Adobe product can help make working with your digital pictures easier. Bartelt. I'm a photo estate planner and the owner of Pixology. We are your go-to experts in motivation and education on photo saving apps, tools, and software. Hit subscribe and the notification bell so that you can be alerted when I upload new videos that might help you on the journey of saving your family photos. For the past few months, I've been on a quest to review different digital photo management options for consumers. If you need to see an overview of what's actually out there, click the link above for a full video on all those options. Bridge is Adobe's desktop media browser and digital asset manager. Essentially, Bridge helps you preview, organize, and do batch processing with your photo collection. If you use Windows File Manager or Finder on your Mac, the Bridge program can really help your workflow. So first I'm going to provide a quick overview of Adobe Bridge. The first thing we're going to do is go to the Adobe website and download Bridge. So I'm at adobe.com. I'm going to click the search button and it's going to come up with the software to download. So we'll click download and it will download to your computer. In order to install Adobe Bridge on your computer, you do have to install the Adobe Creative Cloud app. This is the app that manages all of the Adobe products that you might use on your computer. You don't need to pay for Adobe Bridge. It's actually a free program that Adobe really doesn't advertise but Adobe Bridge works really well with the Adobe Photography Plan, which includes Photoshop and Lightroom. That's only $9.99 a month. All right, let's dive in and look at the interface that we use with Adobe Bridge, okay? So we're on my computer here, and you can see in this center area, it says content. We are looking at the slides that were transferred by one of our clients. They're named very poorly, and anytime you have parentheses, that messes up how a computer sorts pictures. The other thing you can tell is these were batches of slides, and they look like they were shuffled. Let's look at this uh, sixth column here where it says image one seven. It looks like all the sevens are in a column here, and that's just a fluke in how these are sorted. Right now, they are sorted by file name. You can see that in the upper right-hand corner. I'm gonna try selecting organize by date created. That actually seems to have organized them better. With Adobe Bridge, you're gonna find on this interface, there are panels, all right? Down the left-hand side, we've got the favorites and folders panel. This is an area where you can drag folders and have easy ways to click them. So I just clicked on my pictures folder and I don't really wanna be there, so I'm gonna hit the back button and we're back in the slides. The panel below it has filter collections and export. We're not going to work with that today. The panels on the right hand side is uh, preview. That's a really important one. So if I click on a picture, I'll see a larger view of it in the right hand panel. Underneath it are the metadata and keywords panels. All right, so those are all the panels. Now, one area else that is helpful to look at is underneath your content, you can change the size of your photos. You can also click a details view and see um, information that way as well. I just showed you a few of the things that you can work with in Adobe Bridge in the interface. You can see how you'd want to use this program routinely to remember how to do everything that um, is possible in the program. 
There are four essential features I think a photo management program should have if you're going to choose it to manage your family photos. The first feature is you need to be able to organize your pictures in albums or folders. If I come back to my content view here, I'm going to just right click in this content view and select new folder. You can see behind the window here, I've got pictures that um, have parentheses five. I happen to know this was batch five of the slides that our client did. So I'm gonna name the folder batch five, okay? And then I'm going to scroll all the way back up to the top here. So I clicked the first picture that's in batch five. Here's the last of the batch fives. I'm going to just hold the shift key down and then it selects everything when I click on the last picture. Then I'm going to right click or control click with a Mac and I'm going to move these pictures to batch five. That's the folder I just created and now it's moving all of those slides to batch five. The second essential feature I think a program needs to have is that you need to be able to edit the metadata of a photo. We know Adobe Bridge has this because we saw the metadata panel. So I've selected a picture and I can go to the date created and I can change it. I can also scroll down a little bit and click on IPTC core and edit the description and even add keywords right there. I really believe a photo management program should automatically back up the pictures for you. Adobe Bridge doesn't have an auto backup feature. You could use your Windows backup on a PC or the time machine on a Mac. The fourth criteria is do I like using the program? This is important because I want you to use it routinely, right? Uh, monthly, if not weekly, you got to like using it. Adobe Bridge is not my first choice for organizing family photos because it's so utilitarian. It's so workhorse heavy looking. I want to have a better experience with my pictures. So those are the four essential criteria. There are a few other features of photo management programs that I think can be really helpful. Those are photo editing, facial recognition, and being able to share a picture easily. So Adobe Bridge does allow you to edit pictures. So I'm going to just select these pictures here. I select the first one, hold the shift key down, and select the last one. I will then right click or control click on a Mac. And look at my options. Open with, I can open with Photoshop, which would launch Photoshop and each of these pictures individually in that program. And then there's other options that you can edit also. We're going to want to open in Camera Raw. This is just the most awesome way to edit a group of pictures at once. If you haven't done this before, the program will ask you to launch Camera Raw 13.3 and you might have to install it. Now I have all of my photos lined up in below to edit. Because these were slides, you can kind of see along the top and around the edge that they weren't cropped very well. 35 millimeter slides are generally the same. And so I've selected all of them and you can see all the editing things I can do all at once. I'm going to click the crop button and just change the crop so that they're all, you know, cropped a little bit better than the slide capture originally did it. And then I'm going to go to these three little sliders here. There are two things that you can hit. One is the auto. It, applies a whole bunch of work to your pictures as well as white balance. I'll change that to auto and it gives you some options and you do it all at once or one at a time however you like. I'm ready to save the pictures and I click the save button here 
and then I'm given options. So I'm going to save them in the same location. I can name them edited photos and I don't need that web there. I like to put a little underscore and then a counter. So we'll just go with a four digit serial number and it's going to start with the number zero one. And you can actually see what the, the name will look like. Then I click save. So what we're left with here is the edited picture that I just saved and the original picture. The original picture is still in the folder the same as it was before the edits. The bridge interface kind of saves the edits you made in its memory in case you want to go back and do more work with the photo. In order to use the editing features, you do have to subscribe to the photography plan, which I mentioned before is just $9.99 a month. Adobe Bridge doesn't have facial recognition and it doesn't have an easy way to share pictures. There's one last thing I want to share with you and that's the ability to batch rename pictures. So I told you that these slides were very poorly named. You never want to use parentheses, right? So I'm just selecting a few of them here and I'm going to right click or control click on a Mac and I'm going to go down to batch rename. Since we know this is batch five, I'm going to put batch five in there, underscore, restart the sequence number to one, and you can actually see what my current file name is and what the new file name is and how many fo photos will be processed. You can add other things with the naming and there's just all sorts of options. So very powerful renaming tool and it's free to use this feature in Adobe Bridge. You don't need to have any of the photography plans to do it. So I'll click rename and now you'll see that these pictures are renamed. So overall, I'm not sure that Adobe Bridge is a solution for managing an entire family photo collection, but it might be a very useful piece of software for you to have when you want to do batch processing or renaming of photos. All right, what do you think about Adobe Bridge? Have you used it before or is this brand new? Do you think it might be helpful? Leave a comment below because your thoughts might help someone else make a decision about using it themselves. And that is it for now. Thank you so very much for joining us. We'll see you next time.